Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Today we're going to be talking about vectors, Victor. Vectors, Victor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. But I'm not Victor. All right. But I'll pretend I am. So here's an idea. So this, this, by the way, this episode comes from a tip from Ian Stubbs who posted on fcp.co, which you saw and sent to me. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting. So I tested it and I, it works and I added a few things to it. So here's the setup. If you're in Final Cut Pro 10 and you're dealing with uh, vector logos mm -hmm. and you'd want to be able to scale them up, but they get all soft. Yeah. So how, how can you actually keep stuff vector in Final Cut? So one thing about Final Cut is you can't even import Illustrator files. I know. So if I go Command-I. Oh, do I know. <laughs> so I'm doing Command-I in Final Cut here. And in the media import window, I have here some Illustrator files, .ai, and they're grayed out. Yeah, can't yeah. select them. Right. So one way around that is you can take them and turn them into PDFs, you right. know, Open mm -hmm. Illustrator or any vector application of which there are several. Um, so you can see I've saved these uh, particular logos as PDFs, but they're still vector, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna cancel that because I've already imported them mm -hmm. and I've thrown them down in the timeline. And that's great and all, but the thing is here, like I got the Ripple logo, if I scale this way up, yeah, it gets crunchy. It gets all crunchy, right. Yeah. And you may not be like, hey, I'm not going to make it, make it that big. Maybe not. But sometimes you want to animate it. You want to do things with it. Or how about this one? This is a little Conda logo, and it's so small that at 100%, it already looks crunchy. Terrible. Yeah, it does looks look terrible. Good. Yeah, it's yeah. Bad. So here's how you can get your vectors and have them in Final Cut. So nice. You have your cake and I can't wait too. to see it. So what we're going to do is go to Motion. And I'm going to start a Final Cut generator project. And by the way, if you started with a regular motion project, you can always save it as a generator. Yeah, there's a checkbox. You know that, yes. Um, so here I am, and I have in my file browser these logos. And notice that the Illustrator ones are available. selectable and available, and you can bring them in. So either one, it really doesn't matter which one you do. So, so you have to launder your vectors through motion. And, and notice also, if I just let me toggle back to Final Cut too. I want to point out that all of these, we lost the transparency, the background. Oh, yeah. When we brought in Final Cut. There's yep. no transparency yep. at all. You're stuck with that white background. But in Motion, if I take any of those in, I'll take the exact same one in that we did there, um, right here, and drop it in Motion. And look at that. It's black. So Shift T for transparency. Um, see, yep, that's transparency. transparency. Yeah. So you get, you get the whole thing. Yep. So, um, here is the trick. Even in motion, I'm just making a little bit more room here. Um, if I scale this thing up, if I select it and scale it way up, it gets soft. Yes. In fact, to make it even bigger, F1, go to the inspector here. Yeah, you almost, like stopped. After Effects has a continuously rasterized feature. You're, you're all over me. So I'll select the media tab. I'll select this underlying media. And in the media inspector, I'll uncheck fixed resolution, and yeah, now it's it beautiful. Snaps into perfect pixel conformity. Snaps. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to properties and, and reset the scale mm -hmm. to its original size. Mm -hmm. Now, before we save this, um, I want to add a few parameters, and I'll show you why in a minute. Because position, rotation, scale are all things that are already available in Final Cut yeah. in the video tab, right? right? You can change the position, rotation, scale of a clip. But check this out. I'm just going to right click on each of these and publish them. Publish, publish, publish. And I'm also going to publish this. And the what way I think the, about what it. Was this? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I should probably say what that was. I didn't need to keep it a secret. It's the anchor point. Got it. I published the it. anchor point, the Got point it. around which something scales and rotates. Now, I may want this to be on a background in Final Cut. If I go, okay, you got to go to the generators, find a background generator, put it underneath. Put a drop zone behind it. That put, well, I'm just going to put a, um, a, uh, a color solid behind it here. Yeah. So I'll go to generators, and I'm going to grab a color solid and throw it in this group and move it behind. Ugh. I'll change it. To, yeah, I know. I'll change it to white and to make sure it's white. Let's go here and just make sure we're all 255. Uh -huh. Okay. But I'll publish a few things about that guy. Okay. So I'm going to publish its opacity so we can choose how much we really want to see of that background. And of course, I'll publish its color. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I look at my project now, I select the project and look at my published parameters. I've got the position, rotation, and scale of the logo and anchor point. Mm -hmm. The background opacity, let's rename that guy to be BG opacity and BG color. Okay, now command us to save. I'm going to save it as a, um, I have a, I've already created a theme called logos. Right. So I'll throw it in there and I'll call it uh, Ripple logo and publish. So now when we go to Final Cut Pro, 
these are the original ones we put in here from uh, importing them directly that didn't have transparency, couldn't scale them up. If I go to the generation inspector, I've got this logos category, and here are several that I've saved. So I'll right. take the Ripple one in, E to do an append edit, and by default, I turned that background opacity on, but I could turn that off. Nice. And here, if we scale it way up, it's It's not fixed. beautiful. It's, you've turned off fixed resolution. Right. You saved it that so way. So it scales infinitely inside of Final Cut. And um, one reason I chose to do that rotation, let me turn the background opacity back on. If I go to the video tab, here we have position, rotation, and scale, like mm -hmm. for any clip. So I can reposition this, but ah, the background's going to move okay. with it. Now right? I see why. And with rotation, all I get is rotation in Z. Right. Okay. But if I go back to this generator inspector, now I can position my logo independent of the background. So I could fly it in. You could flip it like a coin. And because I have rotation X, Y, and Z, I can flip it around with keyframes. Yeah, like a coin. So it gives me full access to playing around with the logo. Um, finally, you could just have a category of logos, so it's always there. Yeah. But you might want to have this in a particular event that you've got a project you're working on. Mm -hmm. So one way you could do that is to make a compound clip out of it. So option G, and I'll call this Ripple logo, Ripple logo. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, I have added it to my event. So now it's part of that and travels with it and it's always available to me. That's right. So quick and simple, but a great way to get vector artwork accessible right inside of Final Cut Pro. I'm speechless. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. That's fantastic. So thanks, thanks, Ian, for posting that on uh, scp.co, which is a great site, by the way. Great site. Um, great site. Yeah. So um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, if you want to learn motion, you want to learn about publishing and creating unique Final Cut Pro effects generators, titles, and transitions, uh, check out our training and uh, follow us on the usual um, social media channels. Um, check out for sure his Warp Speed Motion 3D, which was recently released. Fantastic tutorial. So, there you have it. Thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you in the next episode.